Upon the inception of Overwatch, Blizzard was looking to create a competitive team shooter with mobile-like elements. Six years later, it's running as strong as ever, but shares the space with often compared to counterparts like Valorant and League of Legends, among other titles. But there is a key aspect of Overwatch that moves it into a slightly different group. It's cross-platform. As of February 5th, 2023, Overwatch can be played on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam Deck, and the Nintendo Switch. While it's easy to see the positives in this, there are some downsides that hold Overwatch down. More platforms does incite more players, which means more viewers for content creators and more money for the developers to support this amazing game. I actually was a console player for the entirety of Overwatch 1. It's where I found and fell in love with the game. I am all for Overwatch being on console, and honestly, sometimes I miss the more casual nature of playing on console. Sitting back on my couch with my scuff controller compared to sweating out at my desk with mouse and key. However, while making the game accessible to all, Overwatch finds itself having to deal with problems that the previous games I mentioned sleep peacefully avoiding. In 2016, Overwatch had a measly 21 total playable heroes, and by now, 4 months into Overwatch 2's life cycle, we've reached a whopping 37 heroes with varying roles, health pools, abilities, and weapons. Overwatch wasn't perfectly balanced back then, and it sure as hell isn't now. So let's say only one platform and one skill level existed. Take your pick, PC or console, and let's say everyone had about the likes of gold mechanics. Blizzard would still have quite a time finding a perfect balance for 37 heroes only residing in one input and balance skill levels. It really is impossible to have a perfect balance and as a player base it shouldn't be expected. Valorant isn't perfect, League isn't perfect, and Overwatch wouldn't be either. But now add in varying skill level. Suddenly Widowmaker starts to look a lot more powerful for the higher skill community and Reinhardt has the same effect on the low end. Do you see the picture I'm painting here? Upon now adding multiple consoles and inputs into this equation with all varying skill levels, it becomes easy to understand that no matter how hard Blizzard tries, Overwatch can't reach anywhere close to a perfect state of balance as it's appealing to too many variables. Even if Overwatch only had one input, it would still be impossible to make every character feel like a viable pick at all levels. And yet, Blizzard has to balance the same heroes playing on an extreme variety of maps and game modes across multiple platforms and inputs. The strongest characters on PC are often not the strongest characters on console, and vice versa. Blizzard's created a world where the player base will never agree on the strength of heroes and what should be done with them. I don't want this to be construed as me hating on console players or that I wish Overwatch didn't exist on the other platforms, but as a player who hopes for a balanced game, acknowledging the barriers created by having cross-platform is important. It helps understand things like why Sojourn hasn't been heavily nerfed yet. While she might be tearing up Diamond Plus lobbies on PC, I can assure you she's not scaring many so over players on controller. I think recognizing the challenge of balancing multiple inputs can help alleviate some of the frustration we can feel towards the balance team. It's a trade-off that in the end does benefit the longevity of Overwatch. But balance isn't the only problem created by cross-platform. Blizzard has outright stated that they need to get updates cleared by Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo before they can launch, which means they can't just fix game-breaking bugs or problems a day or two after finding out about them. It can take weeks. Remember when Overwatch 2 was first released, May, Bastion, and Torb all had to be removed from play due to game-breaking exploits. Well, if not for Blizzard having to get these updates cleared, some players would have had their favorite heroes back in their hands a lot sooner. A game like Valorant would be able to identify an issue and fix it immediately with no delays, but Overwatch just can't be like that. The clearing process can take weeks, and if the update doesn't fix the problem or a new bug is found, another long wait is ahead. Since launch, Blizzard has created a hotfix system that allows them to make small tweaks to numbers and other minor aspects, but anything else has a delay. We haven't seen a serious exploit or bug in the last few patches, but it's inevitable one will come and it likely won't be a simple hotfix. So while having Overwatch available on all platforms does create problems that could be avoided if Overwatch was solely on PC, in the end, the trade-off is worth it. Overwatch being widely available generates so much more money for the developers to create new content and a broader community on YouTube and Twitch. It will always knock off balance when Blizzard has to take bronze players on controller into account when balancing for grandmasters on mouse and keyboard, but that's the trade-off we have to give. Overwatch is alive again for the first time in quite a few years, and new players are joining every day across all platforms. While Blizzard is pushing more new features than ever before, the game is in a great spot and I'm excited to see what Blizzard has in store in the coming months.
Hey, if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching the whole video. If you want to follow me on Twitch where I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's down in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you have a good one. Take care. Peace.